In a weak cell network, one way to create redundancy in leaf switches and also connection to leaf switches is to use traditional VPC technology. This is the main topic of this video. With VPC technology, two leaf switches that are connected to servers, customer switches or rotors behave like one switch so that each device that is connected to both leaf switches assume that is connected to one switch and can create a port channel. Therefore, a connection error or a failure of a switch, a leaf switch does not interrupt network traffic. I'm not going to talk about the details of VPC technology and I assume that you are already familiar with this technology, but we will talk about what will be different for VPC on VXLAN network. The first difference is the configuration of VTEP address. Usually there is a VTEP address in each switch, which acts as a VXLAN tunnel termination address. If we configure two switches as a VPC domain, they must have a VTEP virtual address that is shared by both leaf switches. VTEP virtual IP address is the VXLAN next hop address advertised to other leaf switches. In other words, any route type 2 which advertise MAC and IP addresses behind leaf 1 and leaf 2 switches will be advertised with VTEP virtual IP as the next hub. This also applies to route type 5 which advertise external prefixes behind leaf 1 and leaf 2 switches. In our topology, V1, V2, and V3 are the VTEP address of LIF1, LIF2, and LIF3 switches. When we configure LIF1 and LIF2 switches as one VPC domain, VX will be VTEP virtual IP address of both LIF1 and LIF2 switches, which is configured as the secondary IP address in the loopback interface. VX will be the next hub address in other leaf switches to reach MAC and IP addresses and also external prefixes behind leaf 1 and leaf 2 switches. Now suppose a device is connected to only one of two leaf switches participating in one VPC domain or it is connected to both leaf switches but one link is broken. The question is what happens if incoming traffic reaches the switch that has no connection to the end device. If the link is layer 2 link in leaf switches, it behaves like any orphan device. The data traffic belonging to orphan device may be forwarded to the end device through peer link. In our topology, Server 1 is connected to leaf 2 switch and leaf 1 switches, but connection to the leaf 2 switches is broken. Incoming traffic from server 2 may reach leaf 2 switch. Since both leaf switches have the same VTEP virtual IP. Incoming traffic is forwarded over the peer link to reach server 1, as we have shown with orange color. When the link is a layer 3 link, like when we connect to an external network through just one of the leaf switches, incoming traffic is expected to always reach the correct leaf switch. Otherwise, the traffic will be dropped since the routing information is missed in other leaf switches for external prefixes. As we have shown here with yellow color, the traffic from server 2 to external network is forwarded to Vita virtual IP, but it reaches the leaf 2 switch, which has no connection to the external network. Traffic is then discarded because of leaf 2 switch has no routing information for external prefixes. To fix this problem, we can add a command that force leaf1 switch to advertise external prefixes with VTEP 
primary address v1 as a next hop address instead of with a virtual IP or VX. External prefixes are advertised through route type 5 in L2VPN EVPN address family in BGP. We can force route type 5 are advertised with, with a primary address also called physical address or PIP as the next hub address. This is the topology through which I implemented VPC on VXLAN network. This is exact topology that we have used in our first VXLAN EVPN configuration example. The difference is that LIF1 and LIF2 switch participate in one VPC domain. Interface ETH15 is added in port channel 1 and used as peer link. In this topology, C switch is connected to both LIF1 and LIF2 switches. As you can see, C switch assumes that both uplinks are connected to one switch so that both uplinks are aggregated into one logical port channel 2 interface. In the LIF1 and LIF2 switches, ETH14 interfaces that are connected to CE switch are aggregated as a virtual port channel 2. Virtual port channel 2. VPC on VXLAN network does not come up until you configure a virtual VTEP address. We have configured virtual VTEP address as a secondary address in loopback 1 interface. The primary address of loopback interface in LIF1 and LIF2 switches are 192, 168, 15, 11 and 12 but 192, 168, 15, 15 is configured in both leaf switches at the secondary IP address that is used as virtual with a address. I've divided the configuration into three parts. Step 1, Step 2 and Step 3. Before any configuration, make sure that you have configured VXLAN network exactly as VXLAN configuration example 1. In the first step, I have configured VPC between LIF1 and LIF2 switch. I will not discuss the detail of VPC since I assume that you are familiar with this technology. I have configured interface ETH15 into port channel 1 and used port channel 1 as VPC peer I have configured virtual port channel 2 with CE switch. Difference is that the VPC does not come up until you configure the same secondary IP address in both LIF1 and LIF2 switch as VTEP virtual IP. We can use show VPC command show VPC command to ensure that VPC and virtual port channel 2 are up. As you can see VPC is completely success and LIF1 switch is the primary switch in the VPC domain. VPC keep alive is also up. VPC peer link port channel 1 is also up and VPC port channel 2 which is connected to CE switch is also up. We can check also in CE switch show port channel summary as you can see here is also up in lift 2 show vpc this is the secondary switch peer links up and vpc virtual port channel connected to ce switch is also up the second step an external network is simulated in LIF1 switch. A static route for destination 2020-2020 is advertised in BGP L2VPN EVPN address family. With command show BGP L2VPN EVPN in LIF3 switch. 
you can make sure that the both road type 2 and road type 5 are advertised with Vita virtual IP this is road type 2 and this is road type 5 and the next hub IP address is 1515 which is the second row IP address or Vita virtual IP this is a road type 2 as the next hub address you can also check it with command show l to route mac ip all the next hub address for this address behind leaf one switch is the virtual ip virtual vtep ip address 192.168.15.15 but as you know this create problem for external prefixes when the reverse traffic reaches leaf two switch which has no route information for external prefix 2020 2020 to fix this problem we added two commands in step 3 that advertise physical or primary IP address of the loopback 1 interface as the VXLAN next hub address for just road type 5 prefixes to other leaf switches command advertise PIP in BGP, L2 VPN, EVPN address family and the command advertise virtual or Mac in interface NV or VXLAN context mode together fix this problem Leaf 1 and also Leaf 2 Remember, these two commands have no effect on road type 2. Road type 2 is still advertised with VTEP virtual IP as the address of the next hub to other leaf switches. These two commands only affect road type 5 advertisement. With show BGPL to VPN EVPN address family again, show BGPL to VPN EVPN command in leaf 3 switch as you can see road type 2 is still the next half IP address is the with a virtual IP for, but for road type 5 with a physical IP or the primary IP address of VTEP is the next half IP address for external prefixes